to train a robust mirror skill that enables a robot to perform complex automation tasks, your camera setup and vision settings are critical. After all, the Mirai robot control system learns from the images you show it. Camera setup refers to how to position the camera on the robot, which camera lens to use and what light sources to employ. Because the quality of your camera setup is so vital, we encourage you to watch our two-part video series on getting your camera setup right. This video, though, is about vision settings. Vision settings are the adjustments that you make to the live video stream here in the training app. Mirai sees the workspace through the camera. The video stream that comes from the camera is Mirai's only window to the world. It doesn't have other sources of information about its environment. In the skill creation workflow, the vision settings step comes after you've chosen your camera setup and before you start recording data. Once you determine your vision settings, you need to stick to them through skill training. So take your time with this step. Through these settings, you want to get to an image that will direct mirror's attention to the most relevant geometry in the scene. You want the important things to send out. At the same time, you can leave irrelevant distractions blurry or underlit. To get those important things to stand out, you can use focus, aperture, exposure time and gain. We'll cover each setting one by one. After that, I share some best practices and show an example of an ideal camera image. We begin with focus. In your camera image, you typically want your object of interest to be in focus. Mirai will have a better chance at detecting the object's edges and visual features if the picture of the object is sharp. Focus is particularly important when you want Mirai to be precise during a task. In those cases, move the robot to the position where you need the greatest precision, then set the focus. You adjust the focus on the camera itself. Aperture is another setting. You also adjust the aperture on the camera. Use the little screw to secure your setting. With Aperture, you define how wide your lens opening is. Aperture ranges from f-stop 1.4 to 16. The lower the aperture, the more open the lens. The more open the lens, the more blurry your background and foreground. Conversely, when you set aperture to a higher value, you make the lens opening narrower and the background and foreground sharper. Aperture doesn't just influence background sharpness. A higher aperture allows in less light through the lens resulting in darker images. A third setting is exposure time. You adjust exposure time here on the tablet. This refers to how long in microseconds the camera shutter is open per frame. If you leave the shutter open longer, the camera receives more light. You can therefore make the image brighter by increasing the exposure time. Finally, we have gain. By increasing the gain, you amplify the light that the camera has recorded. This can brighten up your image, but it can also make it noisy, meaning the image contains less information. There's no rigorous method for vision settings. Rather, start by identifying the automation problem you want Mirai to tackle, then consider your workspace conditions, then tinker with the vision settings. Think about what you want Mirai to pay attention to and make sure those details stand out clearly in the image. That said, there are some best practices to bear in mind. 1. Adjust the vision settings when your robot is in target position. If you don't, you might optimize for the wrong conditions. For example, pretend we adjust the exposure time when the robot is a distance from the target. Watch how blown out the image becomes as the robot approaches. Two, you want high contrast in the relevant parts of the image, in this case, the target object here. It's fine if other parts of the image are less visible if they are not important for the task. Three, if you have to choose between underexposing or overexposing an image, better to underexpose it. The aim is not to take an image that looks good to the human eye, 
but to take an image that retains relevant information. 4. Keep the gain low. Start at 1 and only increase it if you have to. Adjust the gain while the camera is looking at the brightest part of the workspace. 5. We recommend starting with an aperture of 8, more in the middle of the range. Here's an example of an ideal camera image. This is the target, a gear. This is the gripper. Above all, the image illuminates what Mira should concentrate on, the gear. The geometry of the gear and the gripper are both visible. Moreover, neither the gear nor the gripper are overexposed. In addition, the background is less exposed and therefore less distracting for Mira. The gear is visible from all distances where background remains dark and blurry. For some automation tasks, you need to train multiple Mirai skills. Let's say you want to use Mirai to plug a cable into a socket. You can train one skill for grabbing the cable and another skill for plugging the cable into the socket. When you train an additional skill, you should adjust the exposure and gain in the app to ensure that the most important things stand out. But don't change the focus and aperture on the camera. Otherwise, you'll likely make the other skills in your task unreliable. Focus and aperture must be fixed for all the skills in your task. So when you define your vision settings, start with focus and aperture. Then use exposure and gain to fine-tune the image for any additional skills. To recap, through the vision settings, you adjust focus, aperture, exposure time and gain. Your objective is an image that will direct Mira's attention to the most relevant geometry in the scene. You want the important things to stand out. You should also aim to minimize the irrelevant geometry. This rule, by the way, applies no matter if you use one or two cameras. And that's it. Thanks for your time.